Aloha. Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apatel, your host, and today's title is Nikki Haley Gathers Support and Money. A major announcement made by the Americans for Prosperity Action Committee, and that is the uh, Koch brothers uh, established uh, PAC, uh, some call it Dark Money PAC, that uh, has gotten off the sidelines and is in full support of Nikki Haley as a candidate to replace Donald Trump for the 2024 uh, GOP nomination. A major, uh, a major event, and we're going to discuss the details of that with my co-host, Jay Fidel, and our special esteemed guest, Chuck Crumpton. Gentlemen, good morning. Morning, Tim. Morning, Chuck. Tim, Tim, Jay. Yeah. We hey. run out of steam. No, we won't. We <laughs> may run out of rain today, but we won't run out of steam. Hey, uh, Jay, this is a major announcement that I think puts a lot of wind in Nikki Haley's sale. Uh, this, this organization, AFP, Americans for Prosperity, is a, a group that has over $70 million in it. Uh, that's quite a war chest for a politician that has been doing some better numbers in the polling and is inching up. And uh, it's a real boost for Nikki Haley. It's a detraction for uh, Ron DeSantis because uh, they were formally supporting him, and now they're not. Uh, Jay, your thoughts about uh, AFP and this uh, announcement that Nikki Haley is their anointed one? You know, it's it's more than just the money. It's the financial leadership. You know, it's like when you have an investment and a lead investor steps up, uh, all the other investors follow the lead investor. So whatever the lead investor is going to invest is only a fraction of what the company will get because of that, you know, phenomenon. And I think it's the same here. Seventy million dollars is a lot of money, but it's going to be much more than that uh, when you when you get finished with all the people following. Um, furthermore, uh, my reaction is, uh, you know, she's a pretty good candidate as far as the Republicans are concerned. She's not a, she's not crazy like Trump, uh, and she's not crazy like DeSantis either. And she's got the money. It's actually, you know, for them, it's a good break because otherwise, I think they were stuck in the notion that Trump was the one, the only one, and that no one would really contend with him. I think this means that somebody will contend with him and possibly even beat him. Um, it also shows DeSantis that he's, he's really not going to make it. He's done. So the question to me is not only whether uh, Nikki Haley will be able to, uh, you know, form up a good competition to Trump for the, the uh, nomination, um, but uh, whether she could possibly beat Joe Biden, you know, she's got baggage, not as much baggage as Trump or DeSantis, um, but it's Republican baggage. It's not a surprise baggage. And in some ways, it's even moderate. Uh, I mean, I, I would uh, vote for her, but in some ways, it's even moderate. And uh, this, this, this is refreshing in the larger picture because th there will, she will not be a crazy candidate. So I think the uh, the Koch brothers, Charles Koch, I think they've done her a, a favor, but I think they've done the Republican Party a favor, and maybe even the country. Well, that's the operative point: is the country. Um, if you're concerned about the preservation of democracy in this country, uh, certainly the rule of law that goes with that, um, your concern is that anyone that is palatable, other than Donald Trump. And does that message appeal to the independents and the moderates in the GOP party? Uh, or possibly those Democrats, believe it or not, that are not, not happy with Joe Biden. Um, does Nikki Haley have that uh, air of appeal for all three uh, categories? Yeah, I think she does. The only question is the degree. How many? Mm -hmm. how, many how many voters can she uh, eat off the margins? And uh, maybe some, maybe some, maybe enough to make a, uh, make a difference. I mean, after all, um, she's, she's, um, she's got a position that's not so bad. There was a, a piece in the, I think it was the Washington Post, listing all her positions. And, you know, to a moderate Republican, they might appeal. And that means a lot. Um, and I think um, to people who are willing to give money, the Koch, Koch brothers' contribution is going to mean a lot. Um, and Trump is getting wilder and crazier, and all his Berman talk is um, is really got to be hurting him with at least some of his base. 
So uh, as I said, um, I, I think it's I think it's good news and it may be bad news for Joe Biden. OK, thank you, Jay. Hey, Chuck, uh, do you agree with uh, what Jay just said, that this is good news for Nikki Haley and good news for those moderates in or and or independents that um, do care about our Constitution and our democracy and find Trump completely um, not to be tolerated? Uh, is this a safe avenue with Nikki you know, Haley? Yeah, and it's always good to see Jay back to his consistently brilliant self and insightful self. And I, I do it for you, Chuck. Well, that's... That, I've never I, done that it for me. for me. That works for me. So, <laughs> but I, I, did, I do want to correct one thing. As I think because... I do some of it for you, Chuck. In acronyms, you're not supposed to use the preposition or the article, right? So the original name of that organization, the conservative Republican, you know the rest of it, right? The oh. acronym... The acronym is much more accurate. I, I follow you. Um, okay. okay, continue. But, <laughs> but what Jay's hit on, which is probably the most important thing, is this is another, not the first, not the last, but another really important indication that there is a real and growing portion of Republicans that are not with Trump that are recognizing, hey, this guy's lost three years in a row. Um, the risk of him losing is too great. And the risk of what happens, even if he wins, is too great. We need an alternative. And that, the funding for that, the people with that, is clearly growing. It's not reflected in the polls because they're not looking for that. But the third factor, I think, that's really important here is that because that element of choice has now been raised for the first time with any real backing, real money, real support, you may start to see increasing divisions, increasing people who are willing to stand up on the Republican side and say, you know what, we should support Ukraine. You know what, we should keep the budget and keep the, the deficit to allow the economy to proceed. We should not crash it just over. And we should stop this nonsense of disabling our military leadership because one guy wants an abortion policy in the military. That's not going to happen. So all of those things, I think, are signs that over on the Republican side of the fence, although it's still a very ineffectual minority, it's real, it's growing, and it's funded. And that has to give Trump pause. Now the question is, what has to happen to continue to feed that growth, to make it effective, before the primaries paint an irreversible picture of the Republican nomination. That's you know, um, Iowa, Iowa caucus is a mere seven weeks away, I believe. And uh, although this data is a little old, it's October 30th from the uh, Des Moines Register and the NBC poll had Trump at four, in, in Des Moines, in Iowa, uh, had Trump at 43 percent, Nikki Haley at 16 percent, Ron DeSantis at 16 percent. Um, moving forward, isn't it crucial or or not crucial, that some of these candidates drop out and those numbers start to coalesce uh, around Nikki Haley. Um, how important is that? I think um, Chris Christie said he's in for the long haul, but uh, and probably DeSantis will probably be in as well. But uh, what about the other candidates that are out there? And how important is it for them to either throw their support behind someone who can take on Trump or throw their support behind Trump? Well, it's a great question because the question for those guys is, do they want to risk a chance at getting to be Trump's vice president? Or are they willing to take a shot at actually engineering directional momentum change in the Republican Party in which they might have a chance to become Nikki Haley's vice president? Well, that would be the choice. I mean, for me, that's an easy choice. Well, if you're one of those candidates, you're probably going, oh, shoot, shucks. 
Uh, it looks like Tucker Carlson has the vote. Oh, God. <laughs> let me let me add something to what Chuck said. You know, I mean, really, you took the words out of my mouth on, you know, the whole issue of this reflects a kind of fracture in what seemed only a, a week or two ago to be a, 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 you know, a clear direction for Trump's nomination. Um, now it's not so clear. There's, a, you know, there's another sheriff in town. And, um, of course, there's a couple of questions on whether she can actually do it between now and the time of those primaries. But uh, I'd like to add one point to what you said. It also indicates that uh, maybe the, just as um, a lead investor like uh, the Koch brothers would uh, bring other investors, if uh, Haley emerged as the candidate, I think it would change um, the complexion of, of the country um, on the congressional races around the country. It would say, well, you know, maybe we ought to look for rationality here. Maybe we're on a new wave. Uh, we are not only, um, you know, going to favor somebody else over Trump, we're going to favor somebody else over the, over the Trumpers. And maybe we'll have more moderate wins in other Republican uh, primaries and, and elections um, over, over the, uh, the next year. So I think it has a, a double effect. Koch brothers and her emergence over the past week or two uh, seems to me will also have an effect on all the congressional races, and we'll see we'll see a different dynamic because of it. Could you envision Democrats contributing to her campaign financially? That's a really interesting question because there are Democrats who are with Biden in name only, uh, who increasingly question his uh, competence and age and leadership. Um, and maybe, you know, they would they would think that uh, she's a better, a better bet. To go further on Chuck's point, um, she favors aid to Ukraine and she favors aid to Israel. And that's unambiguous. Um, so uh, she may be offering something to a lot of people, uh, including Democrats who would want to would want to follow that lead. Um, it also depends. I mean, this is all a moving target. It's a moving target as far as Trump is concerned. It's a moving target as far as Haley's concerned. It's a moving target as far as Biden is concerned. Anything can happen any day to change the calculus. I don't think it's a moving target for DeSantis. And uh, as much as I appreciate uh, Chris Christie and his uh, rhetoric, uh, I, I, I think he's out. Um, so really, the question is whether the country, uh, the Republican Party, as you say, to, to him, some Democrats even, would get behind uh, Haley. And, and, and I was going to say, one of the dynamics in play, which we have to watch, is like, you know, her advisors must be rubbing their hands with the possibility and saying, hey, well, how can we get her over the hurdle here? How can we get her into, into first place? We have to watch everything she says, everything she does. We have to package and repackage her on every issue. And there are inconsistencies, as reported in the post, uh, you know, between things she said on one occasion and things she said on the other. Um, and get rid of those inconsistencies and develop a platform which actually could bring along some, what do you want to call it, marginal Democrats. Uh, so I, the answer to your question is I think it's entirely possible if she does it right. And, I, and I'd love to be, and not that I would ever, ever do this for a Republican, but uh, I'd love to be on, on her, uh, you know, advisory committee, because I think there are tremendous options for her to actually repackage or package her positions so that they appeal to a wider spectrum of voters. Hey, Chuck, um, you know, when, when Trump gets a little nervous, uh, you can see his hand, fingerprints all over um, his spokespersons. Uh, Stephen. Chow, Che, uh, he is the spokesperson for Donald Trump's uh, campaign, 2024 campaign. And he's, um, he's just responded quite quickly to uh, the support from AFP. And he said, um, they're the political arm of China, first uh, of China first, American last movement. He has chosen to endorse a pro-China, open borders and globalist candidate, Nikki Birdbrain Haley. Does that sound like Donald Trump, or does that sound like a spokesperson came up with that all on their own? 
<laughs> Rhetorical question and a good one, right? Okay. <laughs> because um, one of the questions that Nikki Haley raises, it's an inference from the brilliant points that Jay has just covered, is are Republicans going to be receptive to the potential first Republican president in this century that can actually speak intelligible English? That's that's a challenge. That is a challenge. And reason. And, and she does quite well, actually, uh, from what I've seen her do on the you know on the debate stage and in interviews. Um, she's well spoken. Haley Trump debates would be worth watching. It's the mm -hmm. only Trump debate that would be, but it would be. You well, know, let me say that she's very presentable. Um, she knows how to walk, talk, and, and, and present herself well. Um, she's a woman. That's, that's a disability. Um, I think it's probably a disability that she's uh, not white. Um, that's the way it goes, and it's a reflection of our demography. Um, and, and I think her time in the United Nations makes her a globally aware person. I don't know if that really matters to a lot of the electorate, but it matters to me um, that she has global awareness and she's taken positions, which I would agree with, in the, in the United Nations as the United Nations ambassador, um, dele delegate representative, whatever it is. Um, yeah. So I, I think, you know, she has some real positive points. And I think she knows the government. You know, after all, she was governor for several years in South Carolina. Um, she knows government from the inside of the United Nations representation, and she's she's not a um, she's not naive. In other words, Chuck, if you put her up there on a stage with Trump, he's not going to be able to walk on her. She can respond to him. She's tough. Yeah. Um, so, Only you know, women are able to do that. If you watch the Women Report, and she's under seventy five. That's a big plus. Yes, young, vital, all that, all that. And, well, and it and, didn't hurt that Hillary Clinton kind of broke the glass ceiling on being a serious candidate for president of the United States. I think um, had that not been the case, that might be more of an uphill push for Nikki Haley as the per prospective uh, first uh, president, female president in our country. But uh, so go I'd ahead. Like to, I'd like to ask you guys, you know, put her up on that stage. Put her in contention with Trump. Um, what, what, is, what does he do? You know, you're right. He, he goes after the men, not the women. But in this case, uh, you have to ask whether he's going to go after her as the primary opponent. Um, and if, if so, what, what, is he going to call her bird brain too? Uh, it's hard to find something to pry up under her uh, that, that, would, that would resonate with the electorate. It's hard to call her names. But that is his default position. That's what he always does. He, he but, comes but up not with, with women. Men. He does not do that with women. He may have to. Well, but look at all of his press conferences and what happened in exchanges with strong progressive women, independent women. Hey, he fled. He literally fled. He didn't, hey. he, he didn't fled with um, Hillary Clinton. No, no, but that... That wasn't a press conference. I'm talking about where he was fielding pointed, serious questions and wouldn't answer them. And they challenged him on that. And then he tried to switch to another person. They said, hey, answer her question first. Mm -hmm. And then he fled. Not once, not twice, but multiple times he fled exchanges with women, independent press journalists. Okay, so what does he do? What does he do? He's going to do something. He's going to do something nasty. He's going to try to find some dirt on her. He's he going to try to He will not debate call. with her. Trump will not debate with her. He doesn't want to debate with anybody. He doesn't have to debate to be nasty. He can do it all by himself at his, at his rallies. He can call her names. He can find something on her that, to, you know, to play with and, um, and paint her as a, a, negative, a negative person. Um, that's, I guess that's what he will do. Uh, and I agree with you. He's not going to be on the stage with her. It's too dangerous. But that doesn't mean he can't call her names. He's been very successful at calling people names. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something out of his childhood, calling people names in the, in the schoolyard, being a bully. That's what he does. Yeah, so, but it's not going to work for him with Nikki Haley for two reasons. One, she's strong, independent, more articulate, more intelligent than he is. And we all know that. And number two, 
women are already galvanized against Trump. He takes credit for having taken away their right to make reproductive rights decisions for themselves. She has so, a mixed mixed bag in that position. Trump? No, Trump no, no, attacks. Haley, Haley has a mixed a mixed position. If you look through the various mm, mm, ex, you know expressions of policy that she's made, as she sort of switches from one to the other. Yeah, but it's Trump that people he commands people's attention. He wants the spotlight. And he thinks he shines in it. But he if he uses it to attack a woman, I guarantee you that will not go well for him. If Let me ask you this, Chuck. Trigger that does she get the primaries? Does she become more aggressive in criticism of Donald Trump? Or does she leave that up to Chris Christie to act as her foil? No. She says and does stuff that she knows will provoke him. To, because he has no self-restraint. He has no con he's a narcissist. They can't control their behavior because they don't work, want to, and they believe it works for them. Their behavior is exactly what Jay said. It is attacking others. It's not gone well for him with women. He has so far at least started to listen to people who say, cut that stuff out. But she, I'm sure she can trigger him. I'm sure she can push his buttons. Well, there's two sides to it. You know, one is, um, you know, she cannot be provoked. All the name calling in the world, she is, should not write and she won't respond to that. Should be classy, should be elegant compared to him. The second thing is um, that um, she's, she would let him fall on his own sword. If I were on her committee, that's what I would tell her. Just well, let him fall on his own sword. He's doing a great job at that. Uh, and so let him call your names, whatnot, don't respond, and let him look stupid and, I, you know, and, and mean and, and, and all that. Uh, I think I think that's that's what she will do, and that will work. That will work, and it'll make him look like he's misogynist, which is exactly what he is. But I I like to ask another question, Tim. Um, and real quick, before you do that, I I think that really deserves the emphasis. Trump does do that with women underlings. He attacks judges' clerks. He attacks Cassidy. He attacks women underlings that he regards as inferior beings that he can get away with that with. That has not gone well from either. So please proceed here with your question. Well, I was thinking, you know, what is what is the the potentially optimistic view here is that she takes the nomination. Um, she takes it using, you know, good, thoughtful pos positions on policy. And uh, she she deals with Trump and 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 he, and he fails against her. And DeSantis and Christie and whatever else, they all go away because she's the strongest. And I, I think the press means so much, Tim. To your concern about the press always, I think the press, <clears throat> as we are getting behind her, as the Koch brothers are getting behind her, and the press will, is already elevating her. So she stands a chance of getting the nomination against Trump as a well, reasonable... A the question then is if she gets the nomination, and it's Haley v. Biden. What happens then? Where does it look? Well, there's another thing that is the corollary to that, which is if she were to get the nomination and win, the far right mega power in the House and in the party is not going to survive. She's not going to allow room for that. She's a strong, independent, progressive woman. She knows. That has no place in this household. You, out in the yard, watch. Well, Within that's a great years. That's a great point, Chuck. What does the MAGA GOP do if she supplants Donald Trump as the nominee in 2024? Um, do they go berserk uh, like uh, we all fear that they would? Uh, do we have violence in the street? Or do they just uh, you know, lick their wounds and go away and go under the rock in which they came from? Well, it's a clear, easy choice for them. They have to stick with Trump because he's all they've got. Once you stick with Trump, he is all you've got. Nothing else is available because no one else will touch him other than his devotees. But if she wins the nomination, if she becomes the, you know, the candidate for president, uh, all the Republicans will see that there's no mileage in fighting with that. There's no mileage in backing Trump uh, when Haley gets, got the nomination. 
And I think they will turn to support her. And, and the Freedom Caucus and all those nutcases in Congress, they will have no choice but to support her. Where else are they? They're, they're out to dry. They're abandoned. They're in the desert. Without Trump, they have to support Haley as the nominee. So the question is, will the alliances to do that take place in sufficient strength and numbers during and before the nomination, during the primaries and before the nomination, to enable her to get that nomination? That's mm -hmm. the question. You know, I'm yes, reminded, I Jay, you, you and I did a show, actually, the day of um, when we both called Joe Biden out back in, you know, back in 2020, we said, or 2019, we said, he's out, he's done, he's flambéed, he's not going to be a, the nominee for the Democratic uh, nomination. Uh, it was Jim Clyburn that brought him back to life, and then the next day, uh, in, well, in South Carolina, he, he prevailed, and then the next day in Super Tuesday, he prevailed in all those, um, all those events. Uh, so it doesn't take much. I mean, I've never seen that in political history, such a turnaround that Joe Biden had, and thanks to Jim Clyburn. Uh, at what point do we know that Nikki Haley is on her way? Um, what if she does poorly in Iowa and she does poorly in New Hampshire? Is it, is it uh, South Carolina, which is the di dividing line? of what she's a go or no go, well, that's her home state. Sorry. And I apologize because I'm gonna to have to jump in a minute, but um, she has to do two things. She has to isolate Trump and his supporters because they don't have the numbers to win without the independents and the others. They're not even close, 30%, 40%, but not even close. The second thing she has to do is she has to focus and center on that the choice between her and Trump going forward. Mm -hmm. If she okay. does that effectively- I, I know that you have to leave, so do you have your last thoughts before you depart? Th that was it. That was it, okay. If, if Nikki Haley can isolate Trump, if she can be a strong independent woman and stand up to him as only strong independent woman, women can successfully do, she can present a candidate to the American people that probably is likely to win if she gets the nomination. I think so. Okay, thanks, Chuck. All thanks right. for coming on. Our thanks special so esteemed much. guest, Chuck Crumpton. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Jay, do you? Um, I'm optimistic. For the first time, um, there is a possibility that Donald Trump may not be the 2024 nominee. And if, if he's not, I think the threat of losing our democracy and a rule of law in this country, uh, that dissipates rapidly. And I, I'm not in line with Nikki Haley's policies, but it's a palatable alternative to the loss of one's democracy, a 250 year experiment that's been going on pretty well, has some bumps and bruises along the way, but that's the system we've got and it's worked quite well. And uh, I feel optimistic that if she is the nominee 2024 for the GOP, that we may be able to do just that, preserve, re preserve the republic and democracy as we know it. Yeah, I mean, that possibility really strikes me. That's why I was interested in your views about it, because A, if I'm a Democrat, I can feel the optimism. I can feel it. Because, you know, we have assumed over the past few months that Trump increasingly was the candidate and would be a, um, a, a strong runner for president in November. Hmm. But this changes um, the views of Democrats in similar situations. And I believe it also changes the views of Republicans who are more moderate. Um, they can also feel optimistic. And that suggests a kind of snowball effect. So you have the Koch brothers, um, you have her credentials, which are good, and her the moderate quality of her positions, uh, uh, Republican moderate, but moderate nevertheless, and that makes you feel somewhat optimistic. And then the question is, who else gets on the snowball? And uh, I think there will be people uh, announcing, Republicans announcing support for her. I'm just predicting, and maybe maybe I'm over-optimistic about this, um, you know, that we'll see more of that. Um, and the question is whether the hard-nosed um, right-wing crowd will, will turn and support her. If they see that she's a likely success, 
um, they, they'd rather have her than a Democrat, right? Uh, if they feel she's a winner, they're going to get behind her. And if that starts happening, uh, that would be more snowball and, and change the calculus. They may not do that because they're so hard-nosed. Um, but, I, but I think there's at least the logical possibility of it. And to your point about democracy and um, voting rights and the like, you know, Trump has established uh, through sinister means all this, um, you know, all these plots and, and devices to uh, turn the election over in 2024, do the same thing more successfully than he tried to do in 2020. Uh, and so, you know, you have various uh, Republican states which have done voting suppression legislation and gerrymandering and the like. And you have uh, his basic insurrectionist plot and crowd where he will deny losing and, uh, and try to force himself, uh, you know, despite the popular vote. Um, and all those things are in place now. And those things are his kit bag, her uh, you know, all his inventory of tricks and, 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 and devices. But if she gets the nomination, all of that goes away. Um, Nobody is going to be interested in suppressing votes. Nobody is going to be interesting, interested in turning the election over with insurrections and the like. Um, the whole thing just washes away, and we have a much more, I mean, sure, there'll be problems hither and yon, but um, it's a much, it's a likelihood of a much more fair election in 2024. And that would be a great relief for Democrats and moderate Republicans. So we have to watch the snowball, Tim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I suspect we're going to be talking about Nikki Haley in uh, many shows to come. Uh, you know, at some point, maybe we need to get a historian that focuses on presidential elections uh, and, 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 and opine whether or not how often Democrats are secretly hoping for a GOP uh, candidate. I don't know if it's ever been done before, but uh, there's a lot of things that have never been done before in the last seven years. True. A young and diverse woman uh, with um, real credentials and experience in government, it, it all sounds pretty attractive. And she's got the vitality maybe that we have been missing in Biden. And she's got the international awareness and, and the strength of you know, position and character on international issues. And that maybe, just maybe, I, I don't have a real view of this yet, but maybe, just maybe, she would be uh, stronger uh, on, the, on the world stage. And I would welcome that. Yeah. Well, not to put you on the spot, but that's what I'm going to do to my, my co-host, my partner. And that is, earlier in the show, you said you'd like to be an advisor on Nikki Haley's um, advisory committee. So here's a question. Between now and uh, whether or not she becomes the nominee for the GOP, does she take issue with uh, Donald Trump's fascist rhetoric? Does she put a spotlight on his tendencies to overthrow uh, free and fair elections and his uh, position on retribution and, and, and hollowing out uh, key uh, law enforcement agencies, the DOJ, the FBI? Does she spot up, put a spotlight on that? Or is that something that's going to detract from support from other voters? I don't, I don't think a lot of voters uh, actually support Trump's positions. And and his rhetoric on that. So if I were advising her, I would say, just state your own position. And, uh, you know, other candidates, you may say other candidates may have other views, but this is my view. And I think that's where she's tending to anyway. Um, and as I said before, let him fall on his own sword. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not, you know, uh, have a big argument and everything with him. And I certainly would not call him names. I would merely say, you know, you have that candidate and then you have me. This is the this these are my positions, and I think that will really that will respond to any snowball effect, um, and it would in, increase the snowball effect. the The problem I don't know if there's been any press about this. The problem is at some point if she sees that she might be vice president, you know, vice presidential candidate under him, uh, she wants she probably wants to hold back and maybe support him more, not less. But I. I think she has the strength of character not to be comp compromised that way. And I think she's in a position in the continuum here where she wouldn't be compromised that way. So I'm not too concerned about it. If she compromised in order to be, become 
a vice presidential candidate under him, I would be extremely disappointed. And you would too, and everybody that I know would be disappointed because it would be she was compromising to a madman. Good point. And like we've seen in the past, many vice presidents are put in the corner and never to be heard from again, more or less. Right. And that's probably would be her fate. Um, interesting discussion, fascinating discussion. Jay, uh, last thoughts before we conclude. As you said, this is something that we might be encouraged about. Um, it's it, We're in an interesting position because, you know, we ordinarily, we extol the virtues of Democratic candidates in various races. But here we are extolling the virtues of, of Nikki Haley as someone, anyone who would run against Trump. Uh, so she might win. Who knows? She may be our next president if she gets that nomination. And, you know, that's that's so much less threatening than Trump's nomination and, and the possibility that Trump may win, which would be the end of our world, you know, our world and the world in general. So if you had to pick, you know, if you as a Democrat or one who supports Democrat Democratic candidates had had to pick between Haley and Trump, there's no question about it. She is a much better possibility than let the voters decide. Great points. Thank you, Jay, as always. Uh, thank you for uh, being on American Issues, take one. I uh, think that we're going to hear more about Nikki Haley as time evolves. And um, I'm with you. I, I think she's a palatable alternative, and I wish her all the luck in the world. So with that being said, why don't you join us next week? I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And again, American Issues, take one. We'll see you next week. And until then, aloha.